morning church says in psalm 63 1 you god are my god earnestly i seek you i thirst for you in this dry and parched land where there is no water if you guys are able to stand with us this morning to worship let's give all the glory and honor to the one that gave it all for us that praise be the weapon that silences the let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise Arise. We'll see break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation, cry God. 
service did it better. Oh, I can't do that anymore. Good morning. We are glad you're here. It is a great day. It is a praiseworthy day because we have a lot going on. Not only do we have a great service ready to go with our worship and our message that will be shared today, um, we have a special speaker today that I believe you're going to be highly blessed with. And also, it's a day where a lot of we have a lot of graduates that will be graduating today from our congregation, from the different schools, and those who have graduated from college already. And we're just excited. It's praiseworthy stuff. So we are, we are in a mode of praise today. We're praising God for all that he's done and all that he's going to do. So as we continue on today, let's continue in a heart of praise. Let's continue in a heart of, 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 of honoring God with all that we have because our God is good, amen? Amen. amen. That sounds like a 931 service. Praise God. So I want to pray for us as we get continue on with worship. So let's see if you pray with me. God, we are so thankful that we can be in this place. We are so thankful that we can honor you and worship you with all that we have. We're thankful for every person who is in attendance today and everyone who's watching online. We're thankful for how good you are to us and what you're going to do for today, and we look forward to that and to this week and to the future of what you have for us. God, we love you. We are here to praise you with all we have. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. With mystery, things unseen, 
The tides are now changing. I see the dawn breaking. It's happening. The awakening. So come, Holy Spirit, come, hover over us. Holy Spirit, come. Hope in the heavens, fling wide the gates, unleash your presence, pour out your grace, show me your glory, the power of your love, cause even a glimpse is more than enough for me.
this room Holy Spirit, no Cause when you have your way Something has to break Tear down every lie Set the wrong thing right Cause when you have your way Something has to break I feel it in this room, Holy Spirit, cause when you have your way, something has to break. Cause when you have your way, something has to break, something has to break, something has to break, right now in your name, something has to break, something has to break. Something has to break I believe you'll lead me through it I believe you'll get me to it I believe that you will do it right now Something has to break I believe you'll lead me through it I believe you'll get me to it I believe that you will do it right now Something has to break I believe you'll lead me through it I believe you'll get me to it I believe that you will do it right now Something has to break I believe you'll lead me
God, we know that you are a God. And if there's something in our lives that need to break, we know that you are a God that can break it, God. We know that you are a God that can, that can, that can deliver us, God, and that can lead us. God, we thank you that you are in this room with us today. God, we thank you that your spirit's here with us. We pray that you move in a mighty way today, God, that we would see you for who you are, God. We love you. We celebrate you. We worship you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everybody who's here at New Life today to celebrate, celebrate what all that God's doing in our lives. Um, welcome to people who are watching online. We're happy you guys are here joining us as well. God is good. We serve an awesome God. Amen, church. We serve an awesome God, and our awesome God is doing a lot of awesome things here at New Life. One of the big things Pastor Tim talked about it earlier is graduate graduation today for a lot of our uh, our uh, seniors this year. So gra- congratulations to all of our gra- graduates. Um, we're praying for you guys. We're excited to see what your future looks like. We're gonna honor our graduates in a couple weeks coming up, when we, so they all get back from college and stuff like that. So be looking out for that. Um, another big thing that's going on here is summer is fastly approaching. Summer is fastly approaching, and so that means we're gonna go into our summer ministry times. Um, so that means for Kids Zone, this Wednesday night is our last Kids Zone of the school year on Wednesday nights. So we're going to have like a Kids Zone party. So make sure you get your kids out to Kids Zone on Wednesday night to celebrate that. Um, we will have VBS July 11th through the 14th. Um, we'll have a, a, new le- or a next level uh, retreat August 3rd through the 5th. So make sure you're looking out for all that stuff for this summer. Check out our website and our Facebook page for all that good stuff on there as well. And with that being said, um, we will not have Next Level tonight because of graduation going on. So um, make sure you go to all your graduation parties for your friends and all that great stuff too. Um, So there's always something going on here at New Life. Make sure you check out our website for more updates on that as well. Another big thing is if you have not yet filled out an online connection card, make sure you go to our website, newlifebible.church and fill out an online connection card. You never know when you'll get a pack of coffee, you know, if you fill out an online connection card. So uh, make sure you're looking for that as well. Um, So there's a lot of good stuff going on here at New life. Um, And as always, this is the time where we get to do our tithes and our offerings. So if you wanted to give your tithes and your offerings, you can give in the little white box in the back there, or you can give on our website, newlifebible.church slash give, or on the Tithely app if you wanted to give your tithes and your offerings. So if you just want to pray with me as we bless this time. God, we just thank you again for, for being here with us today, God. We thank you for all of our graduates today, God. We pray you just bless their, their futures, God. We thank you for their accomplishments that they, they've done in these past four years of high schools, and we look forward to, to seeing what they do as they continue in their, their lives, God. We thank you for this time of tithes and offerings, God. We pray you bless the giver as they give, and that you would just multiply these funds to bring people to know your name. God, we love you. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go too much further, um, just a, a quick a quick announcement. We have a congregation member who is not doing very well and is in need of prayer. So we want to take this time just to, to lift up Donna Riggle. Um, that's Les's wife. Les, if those of you are wondering, Les is the one. He's always standing out. Um, and uh, as you come in and he's smiling, not Dave, but Les. You'll know. You, you can't miss Les. You'll know Les when you see him. And, um, and uh, he's very happy and, and a joyous man, but his wife is not doing real well. She's in the hospital and um, in critical condition, and um, um, where she's got infections that are just starting to affect her organs, and we just need to pray for her. If you wouldn't mind just one more time, which is pray and, and ask God's um, healing upon her body, if you'd bow with me. God, we are um, in this place thanking you for how good you are, and, and we come before you as a people of praise, but we also come before you as a people who are lifting up Donna today. We lift up Donna and her healing. God, we pray that you would heal her body from the tip of her um, head to the bottom of her toes. And, and God, we pray that you would take this infection away, God, that, that you would work with um, as a mir- work a miracle, God, in her life, that you would just heal her body. God, I pray that you'd be with the family, bring them comfort, bring them um, an understanding of your goodness and your healing power, God. God, I pray for Les as he deals and stands by his wife, God, that you would bless him and that you'd keep him safe, keep him safe and, and uh, just be with him and give him a peace. They only you can give, God. God, we thank you for this time that we can honor you and honor and lift up Donna. We just ask you bless her and her family, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, thank you for today. Everybody who's ever sick or can be healed, I pray that COVID goes away. Are you ready for that then, time to?
Well, today is a special treat. Today, um, we are kind of in like, Justin preached last week, and then now Ashley preached this week. Um, Justin almost broke bad on me last week. Yeah. yeah, so no breaking bad on dad today. This is our daughter, Ashley. Ashley Spickler is a professional counselor. That's what she does. And um, she's smarter than her dad, and um, she's going to share some, some encouraging words today um, from Scripture as we continue our 931 series. Jared, you're up next week? No. <laughs> Lindsay? No. No. Put your hand down. So, uh, so Ashley's going to share the Word of God with us today. Why don't we give her a big applause for, how, for God, what God's going to share through her? Go get him, kid. So last week you got to hear to hear from PT's favorite hashtag favorite preacher, and this week you get to hear from PT's hashtag favorite child. So we'll see what next week brings. But before I get started on my sermon today, my message today, I actually had something else that I want to share that's been on my heart for a, for a little bit. So I want to share. Um, kind of doesn't really relate, but that's okay. So you, this is like a little bonus. So some of you know, most of you know, a few years ago I went on the world race um, where I got to go, it was supposed to be to 11 countries in 11 months, it ended up being about 10 countries in 10 months and then COVID shut us down and we came home. But during that time, one of the most important or the most valuable lessons that I learned was observing the body of Christ across the world. And I got to spend a lot of time in the 1040 window, which is a really high concentration of Muslims and Buddhist and Hindu. And I got to spend some time in countries that are called closed countries. So where us being there was illegal and we could be arrested for what we were doing there, where we had to use like VPNs and different stuff to be kind of undercover. And I got to spend some time going to um, undercover or underground churches. Like we even went to a church that was in a Chinese restaurant because that was their like, front or that's what they put out was that they were a Chinese restaurant, but it was actually a church. So we would meet there. And one thing coming back that really bothered me is just seeing kind of the apathy that the American church or the westernized church has towards meeting together and corporate worship. And it's... It's bothered me for a little while just because I think that we take it for granted. It's something that's so easily accessible here. It's something that like literally you can go almost any night and find a church or a Bible study or something um, to get involved with, to be with Christians. And it becomes kind of like a second thought here. But there are literally people around the world who are dying to gather together who are putting their lives in danger, who are putting um, at risk to be arrested, to gather together. And I think that just shows like how important it is for us to continue to gather together, to continue to be built up by each other, to continue to come in corporate worship, because if it wasn't that important, the enemy wouldn't be against it so much and wouldn't be challenging it so much. So just something to remember this summer. I know summer gets busy. I get it. I travel too. There's a couple weeks in June. I won't be here. I'll be leading mission trips, but I get it. But I just encourage you to find somewhere where you can gather with other believers because it is important. So side note. <laughs> But today, we are going to continue our Acts 931 message, our Acts 931 series from this summer. So if you turn in your Bible to Acts 931, you might have it memorized at this point. We've been referencing it every week so far since our Acts 931 summer began. And it says... Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. So today we're going to focus on the part of the verse that says encouraged by the Holy Spirit. So we've talked a little bit about what it means to be the church, to gather together as the church. We've talked about what it means to enjoy a time of peace and to be strengthened. And then Justin talked last week about what it means to live in fear of the, whole, of the Lord. And then today I'm going to talk about what the Holy Spirit is and how we can be encouraged by the Holy Spirit. So just like my dad, I looked up what encouraged means on dictionary.com. 
And what it says is to inspire with, cor- with courage, spirit, or confidence, to stimulate by assistance or approval, and to promote, advance, or foster. Some other words that it mentioned was um, favor, to develop, to improve, to promote, to strengthen, or to advocate. So I want you to think about, without raising your hand, how many of you can honestly say that you feel encouraged on a daily basis, that you feel inspired with courage or confidence on a daily basis. And as an Acts 931 church, as we go into this this summer, as we focus on this verse this summer, how do we live out encouragement by the Holy Spirit? What does it mean for us to be encouraged by the Holy Spirit? And how do we understand what it means to be encouraged by the Holy Spirit? So first, we kind of have to know who the Holy Spirit is, what his purpose is, and then we can look at what that looks like in our lives on a daily basis to be encouraged by the Holy Spirit. So we're gonna talk about who the Holy Spirit is. And a lot of times when you start talking about the Holy Spirit, the scripture that comes to mind is Acts 2 or the day of the Pentecost. I'm not gonna get into it too much today. I'm not gonna focus on Acts chapter two, but if you don't know the story, um, this was after Jesus died and then rose again, came back to life, came to the followers, and then he went up into heaven and he told them to wait there for the gift of the Holy Spirit to come. And it was the day of the Pentecost and they were in the upper room and a wind came through and there was fire on their heads and they went out and they began speaking in different languages because there were Jews from all over and they were preaching to those Jews in different languages. So oftentimes when we talk about the Holy Spirit, that's where we start, that that's where the Holy Spirit was gifted to the Christians. But the Spirit, God's Spirit, is mentioned in the Bible way before that. It's actually on the first page of the Bible. So in the beginning, in Genesis 1, it talks about how God's spirit was hovering over the water. So God's spirit, which um, in the Bible, it's referred to as ruach, which means the energy or the invisible energy that's similar to like wind or breath. So this spirit in the beginning was hovering over the water. It's also mentioned throughout the Old Testament a few times um, in reference to special gifts that God gives to a few of his followers, people like Joseph or Joshua, Gideon, Samson. It references that those gifts came from the Spirit, through the Spirit, to do certain things. And then also in Exodus chapter 31, it referenced a guy named Buzel, Buzel, something like that. And it says, then the Lord said to Moses, see, I have chosen Bazel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones and to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of crafts. So it talks about giving him the spirit of God, filling him with the spirit of God so that he had a task and a skill that he could do. Um, In 2 Samuel 23, Samuel references that the spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. So the prophets throughout the Old Testament talk about how their visions or their prophecies are revealed by the Holy Spirit or the spirit of the Lord is what is speaking through them, is giving them that knowledge. And then also further into the Old Testament, it states that the spirit will come and it will transform the human heart. It'll empower people to truly love God and love others. In Ezekiel chapter 36, it says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and to keep my judgments and to do them. So this is talking about the future. I will do that. This is the Holy Spirit that's given to us after Jesus, that Holy Spirit. So if we go back to the New Testament, Shortly after the Acts 2 that I referenced before, the part where the disciples, the apostles were gifted with the Holy Spirit to talk to the people who don't understand them, to give them the gift of tongues so that they could speak to those who are from different languages. Um, In Acts chapter 19, not too far, not too long after that, it says, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And I think sometimes what happens is this is where we are today. This is where Christians can be today in this mindset of like, what Holy Spirit? 
We didn't even know there was one. We know of God. We get that there's a God that created us. We get that there's a God who loves us, who, who gave us this love. We can understand that. We can kind of wrap our head around it. And at least we, we know that that exists. We know of Jesus. We can see his life and we can understand that he came. We love him. We love the fact that he died on the cross for us, that he came for our sins. We get that. But then when it comes to the Holy Spirit, some of us are like, who is this? Or what is this? What is the Holy Spirit? Sometimes Christians can even be leery of the Holy Spirit or almost fearful of the Holy Spirit of like, what is this going to do? And if I allow this into my life, what's that gonna look like? And we might have um, a distorted view of what the Holy Spirit could be, or we might have a different spectrum that we fall on, on where we fall under the Holy Spirit or what we believe about the Holy Spirit. But no matter what you think about the Holy Spirit, no matter what you've heard, what you've experienced, what you've seen, I, my hope is that today you'll give the Holy Spirit a chance and that you'll give him a chance to speak to you through me and to show him what he wants to do in your life. Um, if we do have a distorted view of the Holy Spirit, it's not actually from God, it's from people. So it's people's interpretation of the Holy Spirit or people using it in their life, like in their, and then us seeing that. So God doesn't distort things. So if we want a true view, a true picture of what the Holy Spirit is, we don't look to people, we don't look to our experiences, we don't look to what we've seen or what we might know, we look to the Bible. And that's where we're gonna find the true picture of who the Holy Spirit is. So that's, we're gonna spend a lot of time in the Bible today. I have a lot of different verses. So the first verse that I wanna look at is John 16, verse seven. And this is when Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. So who better to go to than Jesus to find out what the Holy Spirit is, what the purpose is. So Jesus says in John 16, verse seven, he says, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. So throughout Jesus's life, we can see that he doesn't typically sugarcoat things. He doesn't give it to us. He's not one to, to tread lightly. He's not one to make things, um, to make us feel better with empty words. So when Jesus says that it's to our good that he goes away, so that the Holy Spirit can come, he means it. It's the truth. And that's hard to understand sometimes because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I think like, man, what would it be like if Like how cool would that be to be able to like walk with him and see him like how awesome. And I like yearn for that. But Jesus says that the Holy Spirit, what we have access to is better than him being here now. So if you imagine it, if he was here now, he is a person, so he wouldn't be everywhere all at once. We would have to, to follow him, we'd have to figure out where he was, probably book a flight, get to where he is, listen to him, right? You might get, maybe he has, he would have Facebook or Instagram, maybe he could go live and you could watch him, but you might have a one-time experience with Jesus, and yes, it would change your life, and yes, it would be remarkable, but we have the access to the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit with us all the time every day. And that's so much, not better because there's no comparing Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but it's for our good that it's here. It's for our good. It's, it's by, according to plan, it's by God's plan. Um, so Jesus references the Holy Spirit further in John chapter three, verse eight. And he says that the wind blows wherever it pleases. You can hear its sound, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. And so it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. And this is the part that gets kind of confusing. This is the part that might get the Holy Spirit kind of a bad rep because it's not predictable. And we don't always like this aspect of God because we want him to fit into our box. We want him to fit into our, our expectations or what we um, have scripted for him. We don't like things that we can't predict. It's, it gives us anxiety if you can't predict something. With a lot of my clients, that's what I know what's gonna happen. That makes them feel anxious. If you're going into a brand new restaurant 
and you don't know how to order once you get there, you might feel a little bit anxious before and you're like, okay, what do I do? Do I go up to the counter? Do I sit down? Do I wait for somebody to come seat me? So when having this aspect of God, having this aspect of the Holy Spirit where it's unpredictable and we don't know what it's going to do, gives us, it makes us feel that a little bit of like, ooh, this is unknown. This is uncomfortable for us. But here's the thing. God doesn't always do things the exact same way every single time. And I think one of the reasons why he does that is because he doesn't want us to worship an experience. He doesn't want us to worship a result, but he wants us to worship him and to seek after him. And I think sometimes when we're, we're looking for that experience or we're looking to, re, to like remake this experience that we've had before, we're not searching for God himself. And we're not saying, God, here I am, like work in me. We're saying, I want that. I remember when that happened, like give me that again. But that's not how God works. He's not, he is a gift giver. He does give us good things and he does want us to seek after him, but he doesn't always do it in the way that we expect him to do. And that's sometimes hard for us. But I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to worship a God that I can understand. My God is so much bigger than my understanding, and that's the way I like it. Because if I could worship a God that I fully understood, if I had all the questions answered, he wouldn't be God. He would be something that fits into the concept of my mind, and that's not who I serve. So Isaiah 55, 9 says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So God is bigger than anything we can imagine. And it's okay, God's bigger than our questions too. If you come to God and you say, hey God, I don't understand this, I don't get it, it's okay. He's bigger than that and he's able to hold that and he's able to exist within that, so it's okay. But that being said, 1 Corinthians 14 Verse 33 says that God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. So even though God is outside of our own understanding, even though it's difficult to predict him, even though the Holy Spirit moves like the wind, and it may start, I don't know if you've watched the wind, if you think it's gonna blow, sometimes it goes the other way. You think it's gonna be a windy day, it doesn't. Sometimes it's unpredictable. And even though God can be like that, he is still the God of peace and of order. It's not chaotic. He has a plan. So what exactly does the Holy Spirit do? What's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? So the purpose of the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna talk about five different things that the Holy Spirit helps us, five things that the Holy Spirit does for us and through us. So the first thing that the Holy Spirit does is he points us towards Jesus and he helps us become more like Jesus. So in Romans chapter eight, verse five through six, it says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind that's governed through the flesh is death, and the mind that's governed through the spirit is life and peace. So the Holy Spirit helps us to, to seek out that life and peace. It helps us to become more like Jesus. It helps us to sanctify ourselves and to find the elements of ourselves that, that aren't like Jesus so that we can change them, so that we can grow closer and closer to him. The second thing that the Holy Spirit does for us is that he gives us power to witness to others. He gives us power and he helps us so that we can go out and we can save others and we can lead them to be more like Jesus. In Acts 1, 8, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He gives us a boldness that we can testify of Jesus Christ in situations where we might normally be fearful or you might be timid. The Holy Spirit gives this. It says, it's the Bible, the Bible says it. So if you're afraid, if you're timid, or if you're fearful of testifying of him, you have to access the Holy Spirit and say, speak through me, let me be your witness. In 2 Timothy 1.7, it says that God has not given us a, a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Oops, 2 Timothy, not 1 Timothy. Oops, sorry. But he gives us, he gives us power to be his witness. He gives us power in spite of fear. He gives us the ability to go out and to get out of our comfort zone and to say things in ways that, that we never thought we could, that we never could without him. 
The third thing that the Holy Spirit does is he guides us in the truth. So he reminds us of what the truth is and he brings us back to the truth. John 16 verse 13 says, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will only speak what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. So the, whole, the Holy Spirit helps us to see what the truth is. And the truth is Jesus. So again, the Holy Spirit leads us back to Jesus. It all comes back to that. The fourth thing that the Holy Spirit does is that he convicts us when we sin. In John 16, back a couple verses in verse 8, it says, when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. So if you're living a life of sin, if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing or that's not going to make you more like Jesus, if it's not going to point you back to the truth, then the Holy Spirit's going to convict you in a way that leads you away from that. And not in a way of shame or of guilt, but in a way of repentance that wants you to be more like who Jesus wants you to be, who wants you to be more like who you were called to be and who were who we were created to be. And then the last thing that the Holy Spirit does, or the last thing that I'm gonna cover today that the Holy Spirit does, number five, is that he teaches us and reveals God's word to us. In John 14, verse 26, it says, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I've said to you. So we can look to the Holy Spirit back again, for Jesus, Jesus is teaching, the Holy Spirit will remind us of those things and will teach us and remind us and bring those up when we need it the most, when we're struggling, when life is hard, the Holy Spirit will help us to remember those things that Jesus said so that we can live more like him and become more like him. So what's our role in all of this? So if that's what the Holy Spirit does, what do we do in response to that? So one of the biggest things, at least I think, that our role is in living by the Holy Spirit and living in encouragement of the Holy Spirit is to kind of get out of the way. So what I mean by that is I think the biggest thing that we can do in preventing the work of the Holy Spirit is if we let our own thoughts or our own sins or our own desires get in the way or take the place of the Holy Spirit's working. So I'm a counselor, like my dad said, um, and one of my theoretical orientations or what I use when I counsel people is what's called cognitive behavioral therapy. So in cognitive behavioral therapy, there's what's called the CBT triangle. And I taught this to my students at school. So if you are one of my students, you may know this or may remember this. So basically what the CBT triangle says is that your thoughts impact your feelings which then impacts your actions or your behaviors. So what you think about changes how you feel, and then that changes what you do. And then there's kind of a fourth part, it's kind of like a CBT square, is that that then impacts the consequences or the impact of those behaviors, and consequences can be good or bad. So our thoughts are really, truly powerful and learning how to identify them and to challenge them and to redirect them back to what the Bible says or where the Holy Spirit is leading us can change our lives. Because if you let your thoughts be powered by you or be led by fear or be led by pride, you're not gonna get to where the Holy Spirit is trying to take you. It's not gonna happen. There's a reason why the scripture mentions that we should take our thoughts captive. In 2 Corinthians 10 verse five, it says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. And it's not something that's easy to do, because sometimes I always tell my students or my clients, we can't always control what pops into our head sometimes, but we get to choose if we're going to leave it there. We get to choose if we're going to focus on it or if we're gonna let it pass and we're gonna focus on something else, if we're gonna replace it with something else. Because our brain's super powerful and super cool, but it can't think about two things at once. You can try it. You can try to say the alphabet and, the, and count to 10 at the same time. You can't do it. You can't do it. You have to go back and forth. So we can't think about things that are not of God and things that are of God at the same time. We have to choose. And we have to choose to take those thoughts captive we have to choose, as Romans says in, in chapter 12, to not confirm to the pattern of the world, but to be transformed by renewing our mind because that's the way that we can test what God's will is. 
his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So if we're led by our personal thoughts, if we're led by a spirit of fear, what's going to happen is we're going to feel scared and we're going to act in that way. We're going to avoid the thing that's making us fearful and it's just going to continue. You're not gonna break the cycle. It's gonna spiral and it's gonna get worse because you're gonna feel more fearful and then you're going to continue to think fearful thoughts and you're gonna continue to act in a way that goes into that and it's gonna keep going and keep going and keep going. If you live in a spirit of pride, if you have thoughts of pride and you give root to them and you continue them, you're going to continue to feel pride, you're going to experience judgment and then you're going to continue to do that and it's gonna continue to spiral and get worse and worse. If you live by a spirit of anxiety, of depression, of self-pity, of shame, of self-righteousness, of division, all of these things are not from God and if you allow yourself to take root in your mind and you allow yourself to continue to focus on those things, it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's going to spiral and it's going to continue. So instead, we have to take control of our thoughts. We have to break the cycle and not be drawn into a place that will just continue to spiral lower and lower and pull, pull us away from the place and the space where God wants us to be. So if we listen to the Holy Spirit's encouragement and we renew our minds and we transform our thinking, and we recognize what God's voice is and what the Holy Spirit is, and we test it, then we can see an impact in every area of our lives. It will impact our thoughts. It will impact our feelings. It will impact our behaviors and the consequences of those behaviors, both for us and for others. So how do we do that? How do we know if it's from the Holy Spirit? How do we know if it's working? The same way that we can see the impact of the wind is how we look for the impact of the Holy Spirit. So we have to look at the product or the fruit. We have to look at what comes next from it. So going back to that triangle, the CBT triangle, we have to look at the last part of it. What is the consequence? What's the impact? What's the action that's coming to see? And if the action is divisive, if the action is living in anger, if the action is living in fear, or living in anxiety, if the action is um, chaos, it's not from God. It's not from his spirit. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such things, there is no law. This is the fruit. This is the impact. This is the behavior, the actions that we'll see if we're living by the Holy Spirit, if we're being encouraged by the Holy Spirit. So you can look in your life and you can see, do I see self-control? Do I see patience? Do I see gentleness? And if I don't, like, God, give me that. Help me to transform my mind. Help me to renew my mind. Help me to focus on the things that are of you so that I can have this in my life. And when, we are, when we're looking at our thoughts, we can test our thoughts to see, is this from the Holy Spirit? Or is this from me? Or is this from the world? Or is this from the enemy? In 1 John 4, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming and now is in the world already. So there's a few ways that we can test to see if something is from God or not. The first is to look at, does it exalt Christ? Everything, every purpose that we saw for the Holy Spirit was to bring us back to Christ, to bring us back to become more like him or his characteristics, to be led by him. So does the thought that we're having, does the experience that we're doing, does it exalt Christ? John 14, 26 reminds us that the, says that the Holy Spirit reminds us of Jesus and guides us in the truth. We read this verse earlier. It will teach us all things and remind us of the things that we've said to you. So if the action that we're seeing exalts Christ, then we can know it's from the Holy Spirit. The second way to test it is to look if it's scriptural. If it contradicts the Bible, it's not from God. If it contradicts the scripture, it's not the Holy Spirit. God isn't, he's not competing with himself. 
So he's the God of order. He's the God of peace. So Proverbs 30, verse five through six, says every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or he will rebuke you and prove that you are a liar. So we have to come back to scripture. And the only way to come back to scripture is if you know scripture. So you have to be in your Bible. You have to be reading it. You have to have that that access to it to be able to test it with the scripture. If you don't know the scripture, you're not gonna be able to see if it's valid or not because you, you don't have that frame of reference. The third thing to do to test it, to see is this from the Holy Spirit or is this from myself, is to see how other Christians respond to it. So to say this, to share this with those, with Christians that you trust, people who, um, who are in the scripture, who are following Jesus and exalting Jesus, and you tell them, um, 1 Corinthians 14, 29 says, two or three prophets should speak and the others should weigh carefully what is said. So you go and you seek counsel from others and you ask them, is, does this line up? Do you think this is from God? And then the last way to test it, or the last way that I recommend to test it, is to look at the fruit, to look at the impact. We've talked about when the Holy Spirit is guiding us, we can see what comes next. We can see the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And if it's not producing those in your life, then it's probably not from the Holy Spirit. It's probably not from God. So when we, when we see these things, when we have these thoughts, when they aren't from God, when they aren't scriptural, when they aren't, when other people, other Christians aren't approving them, we have to do that work to challenge them and to get them out of our head. And it's not always easy, but it's worth it because when we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that's when we know what God's will is. That's when we know, and that's when we live a life that's according to his will. That's when we can walk and step with Jesus and become more like him. And it's worth it. Even if it's difficult, it's worth it. So I want to close in prayer real quick, and then the worship team can come forward. Um, dear God, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit and that we have access to the Holy Spirit in our daily lives. And God, I just pray that we would um, seek you first above all things, that we would look for your ways and that we would look for things that glorify you and that exalt you above all else. And God, I, I pray that we would be fruit inspectors and that we would be looking for the impact of our actions, the impact of our thoughts, and that we would be transformed and renew anything that is not from you. And thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen.
your presence pour out your grace show me your glory the power of you love cause even a glimpse is more than enough hope in the heavens fling wide the gates unleash your presence pour out your grace show me your glory the power of somebody else with that power of the Holy Spirit flowing through you because God is good and God is doing a work and God has a beautiful plan for each and every one of you as you go through your week. So as we get ready to go, what we want to do is we want to pray. And I'm going to pray you out as you go out into your week. And uh, we're going to, I'm thanking Ashley for the word that she shared today. It was a great word. We give her a little hand clap for how good God worked through her today. But before we go, let's just pray. God, we are so thankful that we can Come and we can hear your word and be encouraged by the Holy Spirit today. God, I pray that as we go out, we are all encouraged by the word that was given today. We, are, we pray that you would just take us and, and lead us where we need to go. I pray that you would lead us in the direction that you have for us. God, that we would not go on our own or in our own pride, but that we would trust you. God, we love you. We thank you for what you've done and the encouragement that you have brought. God, we ask you to bless us as we go our ways. We thank you. We praise you and thank you for the good things you've done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Give God a hand clap as you go out, church. We'll see you next week. God bless.